still feel the fear, but it's under control. I got too many things to do out here to let this stop me. They said, Joshua, the kings are in the cave. He said, I can't deal with that right now. I got enough to fight without going back to fight that. You just roll a stone up on them, put them on hold, put them on ice. I'll get to it later, but I am bringing this up under control. Control. It's an important aspect. Control. The Bible said that a man who cannot rule his own spirit is like a city without walls. If you can't get control of yourself, you have no safety. Anything can happen to you because you don't have any control. That means you've got to be able to feel some things and resist them. See, the church for years had taught deliverance from a perspective that actually gave people a license to act out. Because we taught people that if you prayed for them and laid hands on them, God would deliver them. And they had to wait on deliverance, which actually says all the while you're not delivered, you've got an excuse to act out in whatever is raging down inside of you. But I found out more times than not, it is not so much that God delivers you. It is that he restrains what you could have been, brings you the power to bring your life to order. It is not that you don't feel it. You're not tempted with it. You don't wrestle with it. You don't deal with it every day but you've got it under control I know you can't say anything to me today but there are some people sitting in here this morning that are a controlled substance you know it's like somebody who has high blood pressure but they got it It's not that you don't have it anymore, but you take a pill every morning and it keeps it under control. That's the difference from healing. Healing, if you were really healed, you wouldn't need the pill. So while I'm waiting on my healing, talk to me, somebody. I believe in divine healing. I believe that God can heal you from anything. I believe at any moment, should he nod his head or wiggle his nose, everything in my body will be immediately healed. But while he's making up his mind, I'm going to take this medicine. I might not kill it, but I got it. How many things in your life have you had to restrain, tie up, hold down, resist? Because if you didn't get it under control, you would have lost the battle over here because of something that happened over there. Joshua is fighting this way and he hears word that the kings are in the cave over here and he says, roll a stone in front of it. I got enough to deal with over here. I got it under control. This way and that way. Kings in the cave, but I got a conquest over here and I got to deal with this. So I put this under control. This versus that. A friend of mine told me the other day, he looked up at his roof and his roof was leaking. And he said, oh, we're going to have to tear through the plaster up there and fix the plumbing because there's a leak in the roof. But when the plumber came, said, he said, don't tear the plaster over there. It showed up over there, but it was coming from over here. How many, how many, things, how many things in your life show up over here? So many times we fight the symptoms and, and we're over here, trying to, we're trying to fix the stain, but the real source is over here. The child is acting out in school, but, but, but the source of the problem is Truth be told, everybody in here has, has got some things you're trying to get done over here, and you've got some things over here that you're trying to get up under control. You've got some breaking out of issues that are coming over here in your life, but the source of the problem is way back over here in the cave. If I don't tell you any more today, that was worth the whole trip. 
what you're dealing with over here may be coming from over there. I won't spend a lot of time with it, but I, I learned a lot in marriage that in dealing with my wife, that what she might be upset about, might, what she's talking about may not even be. I'm upset because she never take out the trash. And I take the trash out and she's still upset. And then I realized by that evening that it wasn't about the trash at all. She was worried about the kid in school, but she had a fit about the, The stain is over here, but the leak is over there. So Joshua's fighting this way, and he's got to bring this up under control. Because when it rains, it pours. When it rains, it pours. You're fighting this, and you got this, and you got this responsibility, and you got the greatest challenge or the greatest opportunity you ever had in your life, and then you got this, this other issue mulling over here. In the, and, and, and the first step is to get it under control. How many people will admit you got some things you need to get up under control? He wants to get it under control so that he can finish his conquest. And he's out there slaying and driving back all the inhabitants of the land. And he says, I'm going to deal with this in a minute, but I'm going to, I'm going to seize this opportunity. I'm going to maximize where I am while I deal with where I was. Because I don't want to lose where I am by going back to fight where I was. I don't want to lose my today going back fighting my yesterday. So even if I can't kill it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll a stone in front of it and get it up under control and then I'm going to be right back on my post fighting the good fight of faith because I got a conquest. I got something to go after. I got something to go after. I got something to go after. It's hard to kill a man or woman who's got something to go after. I got something to go after. My past can't kill me if I got something to go after. Something, something ahead of me, something to fight for, something to get out of the bed for, something to resist the fear and the struggle and the pain. My God, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody in this room has got something to fight for. So I want to tell you about the conquest, the conquest. You need a conquest. You need a challenge. You need something that makes you get out the bed in the morning. Something that demands something of you. Something that will not allow you to wallow in your history, your agony, your disappointments or your fears. You must have a conquest. When the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread, it is reminiscent of the manna falling down from heaven. And the thing people forget about the manna is that you had to reach for it. Whenever God sent the manna down to the children of Israel, it never fell in their tent. It fell in their reach, but it never fell in their tents. Oh God, let some fall that makes me reach, that makes me stretch. That gives me dry. I've got something to reach for. I've got something to reach for. I may be sick, but I got something to reach for. I may be fearful, but I got something to reach for. I may be in pain, but I've got something to reach for. So you need a conquest. Step two, you need a conquest. You need something to reach for. You don't have to put the bread in my mouth. Let me reach for it. This is your year of reach. This is your year to go on conquest. This is your year to do exploits. This is your year to break your routine and get away from your normal and get out of the box. This is your year to do exceedingly abundantly above. This is your year to do exploits. Reach for it. Reach for it. The kings are in the cave. Reach for it. Oh God, oh God, that makes me feel like preaching this morning. I feel like I'm talking to somebody. Your kings are in the cave. Reach for it. Shake hands with three people and tell me you need a conquest.
away from easy assignments, away with simple solutions, away with things that do not motivate me, invigorate me, make me think, make me pray, make me study, make me read. I don't need a friend that doesn't stretch me. I don't need a job that doesn't stretch me. I don't need a spouse that doesn't stretch me. I need a conquest. Reach. I'm amazed at people who will not break the society they came from. They stay in the same sociological circle because it's easy, because it's normal, because it's familiar, because you already know what to say and what to do and what to act. But if you want to have life and have it more abundant, get out of your circle. Get into something that stretches you. Something of conquest. Tell your neighbor you need a conquest. Glory to God. 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 A conquest. I love it, but I hate it. I want it, but I'm scared of it. It's mine, but I'm nervous. I know how to do it, but I'm scared I won't do it right. Give me a conquest. God, my God, my God, I feel the Holy Spirit soaking down into somebody's soul. You need a conquest. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you're going to walk with me, stretch me. Stretch me. If you see me slagging back, stretch me. Slaggers get lost. Slaggers get lost. Slaggers get killed. Slaggers die out. You need a conquest. Grandma, you need a conquest. Get out of the bed, put your clothes on, get your hair done. You need a conquest. Go somewhere, if, even if it's down to the corner and back up again. You need a conquest. You need a conquest. You need to be with something that stretches you and drives you and gets you out of your element and makes you think and makes you read and makes you go forward. If you don't, sickness and disease and fear and doubt will drive you into a cave. Either you go forward or you go to the cave. My God, I'm talking to somebody. I need a conquest. On my job, I need a conquest. Give me something I'm scared of. Remind me of the lepers who said, you know what? They say, if we sit here, we're going to die. And they say, if we go, we're going to die. They say, why sit here and die? If I'm going to die, I'm going to die going after something. If I'm going to lose it, I'm going to lose it in the stretch. I will not die in the seat of what I could have, should have, would have, might have, wonder what would have happened. The devil is a liar. But conquest without confronting your issues is a false sense of victory. If I'm winning out here and I never go back and confront what was in the cave, am I really winning at all? If I paint the ceiling where the leak showed up, but don't confront the source that caused the stain in the first place. 